Hello and welcome. I see that um, the room is slowly but gradually filling. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward um, to having a conversation with all of you. And uh, to those that are already dropping in, I can see that the numbers are climbing up, which is nice. Um, you can see already that uh, Rebecca is with me. So uh, Rebecca Kalt is our yeah, expert for today's session. And uh, Rebecca and I have been working over the past years uh, together. And that is why we set up this uh, webinar on uh, corporate sustainability. And um, yeah, maybe before we start, also a couple of words um, about myself and maybe about Rebecca and how, let's say, the connection was established and why we are hosting it now today at IDC. So um, Rebecca and I, uh, we um, met because I have uh, two hats, basically. So my first hat is in academia, so with IDC Blade School of Management. My second hat is with uh, Polimundo AG, which is a small consultancy, sustainability consultancy in uh, Germany, in Heilbronn. For those of you who are familiar with uh, German uh, cities, of course, then Heilbronn is in the um, yeah, southern part of Germany. And um, then we got together, so um, within my network, and somebody recommended us to uh, Rebecca and her team. And so we had a first workshop, and um, I was telling her about my connection also um, and my passion for translating everything that I learned from academia also into practice, and especially, um, of course, the yeah, sustainability legislation is driving us pretty much crazy, I would say, Rebecca, um, in the European Union. And uh, that was also one of the pressing issues, uh, not maybe the most urgent one, but one of the pressing issues why uh, the GKD group um, was then uh, approaching us and saying, look, we have to report according to the CSRD or Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive as a long term. Um, and uh, overall, and aside from that, we would like to push sustainability in our company. And uh, we have certainly um, some, some struggles because, of course, maybe um, some positions are not yet filled and we would really like to get started. Can we do something together? And so I said, yeah, I'm totally up for that. And um, because of the experience that I had with Rebecca and also other companies that I was having the pleasure and honor to um, work with um, during the past uh, two and more years, um, I thought, okay, maybe we bring a similar format of um, enabling this uh, sustainability transition also to IDC um, and to uh, um, yeah, other countries uh, within Europe that have the same issues because of the legislation, because of um, the raising let's say, awareness in the sustainability domain. And yeah, that is why I brought uh, Rebe uh, Rebecca along together with me today. So Rebecca is, as I said, a sustainability expert um, as well, just in the corporate world. And um, she is uh, title-wise the um, yeah, global head of PQS. So um, also dealing with quality and uh, sustainability um, regarding products and also extended uh, yeah, responsibility areas, I would say, Rebecca, um, at the GKD group. And so she oversees a lot of processes. And I think she will also maybe say a couple of more sentences about herself. And um, yeah, then we will start into the content of today's webinar. Rebecca, maybe just a few words about yourself. Yes. So thank you so much for, for invite, uh, to invite me to this uh, webinar. So I'm happy to, hear, to be here. Um, yeah, so you said already some words. So um, my name is Rebecca. I'm 40 years old. I'm responsible globally for processes, quality and sustainability in the GKD holding. So um, we are in the heart of our soul, I would say. So basically, we are a technical weaving company. But um, I think we, we start there um, next year, 100 years ago. So we are a family-owned business, uh, 100 uh, years old uh, next year. And I'm happy to say that we also, over the globe, have um, several uh, production facilities. I have really nice uh, colleagues also over there who supports um, me, supports the organization also with regard to sustainability. Um, from a background, I'm um, a technical textile background and did later on my MBA um, beside the business. And uh, yeah, so I'm lucky to say that I had the chance to develop myself with the company. And we are coming with what I'm responsible for um, 
basically on the um, ISO, from the ISO perspective, so management related things. And then it goes more to professionalize, we're talking about processes and then sustainability becomes more and more a focus part. So um, we said it uh, makes sense also to put, uh, to give it more, um, to put it more into focus. So therefore sustainability is now in the name also of my responsibility. And um, yeah, so um, we, we decided uh, two years ago, I think, um, to push um, topics for sustainability in a certain initiative um, named C, so um, Sustainable Economic Enterprise. And um, lucky enough, I, we, I, we or I met um, Marina and her team. And so we come together and yes, now today I'm here. Perfect. Thanks, Rebecca. I'm really happy about this. And um, for all our attendees, just in case you were wondering what the agenda is, I will jump to that also um, in a second. So give me a couple of more seconds to share also my screen because we have prepared a couple of slides before we go into the interview. And um, what you, of course, know the topic, and I said it before, is corporate sustainability with the GKD group. So Rebecca, today as our um, expert. And yeah, we just uh, introduced ourselves very briefly. As I said, um, my second head is with IBC. So I'm assuming here the role of lecturer and researcher, and also the second head as a consultant. And I'm combining both of this expertise um, at uh, IDC and with the aim of um, also translating the experience that Rebecca and I will share throughout this interview also into uh, courses and course formats that we would like to host at IDC precisely this year. Now we have briefly uh, moved on to the introduction and um, now we're diving into uh, um, yeah, our uh, brief interview, uh, which will range for around about um, half an hour. And then um, you are also, of course, very much welcome to um, share your Q&As also either via the Q&A button um, in Zoom or, of course, um, yeah, um, other means, of course, but I believe a q and a in the Zoom is, of course, our preferred uh, way of communication and then we can share it and uh, read it out to you. And we allocated roughly like 10 minutes for that. And then um, as a wrap up, I will also present to you in the last um, 15 minutes, 10 minutes roundabout, um, the IDC program that we have crafted on insights, for example, of um, yeah, people such as Rebecca and also um, other companies we have, work, we have worked with in Germany, but also obviously beyond um, uh, across the Balkan states and um, yeah, across Europe precisely. Now, um, before I would like to um, open the, let's say, floor for our interview, I would like to show you um, some video about the IDC, so the facility where I'm speaking from um, today. And uh, just for those of you who have not been yet um, at the school, at our premises, so maybe just, um, yeah, lean back and enjoy this uh, short video. We don't focus only on knowledge, we much more focus on skills and attitudes of people. That requires energy, that requires uh, focus of the topics uh, we talk about. And in this program we got energy from the participants, we cover the topics which stretch them, which makes them occasionally uncomfortable, but allow them to perform better once they come back to the organization. What you will definitely agree is that great sales forces are never born. 
A great sales force is the result of managers making conscious choices for a long period of time in a way which is steady and consistent with the strategy of the organization. It's all about learning from companies around the world that have achieved sustainability in their project based on their ability not only to attract new customers, but also to create, develop, and maintain profitable relations with the customers they already have and also with the ones they attract. As a background, I would really like to um, start, um, of course, moving and um, giving the floor also to Rebecca and uh, starting with the first question. Um, so, Rebecca, of course, when we talk about sustainability, um, I believe there have been a lot of people who firstly think about um, yeah, recycling, energy efficiency, waste reduction whatsoever. So maybe we start with these um, very common understandings of sustainability before we move on into the more complex topics. So um, what strategies has the GKD group implemented to improve um, energy efficiency and also reduce waste in its operations? And how would you measure that impact? Um, so uh, for GKD, sustainability is part of the DNA. So it's not also coincidence that our vision also includes making the world we live healthier, cleaner and safer. And um, to answer your question specifically, I think it makes sense to mention that in my view, there is no one and only sustainability strategy. So that's not the case. So over the last few years, we have learned to focus our efforts on anyone who has studied these topics and most of you are more in detail than I do. So we'll agree also that it doesn't make sense to jump on every trendy topic. So we are a manufacturing company, as I said in my introduction. So we are a technical weaving company and we learned early on to constantly invest in data transparency, for example. So because only when I have transparent uh, data, I'm able to assess efficiency and of something and to make also decisions. Yeah. And when I look back over the last two years and I look back ahead into the future, the main focus topics are definitely decarbonization of all locations, energy market strategies we have to follow and not only for future business models and also energy storing. So uh, when it comes to energy efficiency, these three aspects um, together serves efficiency on the one hand, but above all self-sufficiency for us. So this is an important factor. And to your second part of the question, so when I look at the issue of waste, it is important to have a holistic approach to the circularity of our products. So our products are expensive. So we are talking about um, a special synthetics with special coatings. We are talking about um, wires made of, of steel, uh, special steel. So uh, they are expensive and we cannot afford to waste them. So in the recent years, we have invested a lot of making our planning process more precise. We invest in uh, also ERP systems um, to optimize processes. Um, so we have also made a lot of progress in the selection of materials. They use their, um, their life cycle and as well, for sure, also recycling options. So uh, through the use um, analysis collaborations, also with startups, for example, or research projects. So um, yeah, so I think this is a, a lot of impact, yes. And uh, we did already a few things to that. Great, yeah, thanks. 
And um, while I said, of course, um, that is kind of the basic understanding of sustainability, and you touched upon that already very precisely, um, that it's also linked for you with um, the regards to material innovation and so on. Maybe the follow-up question that I would have is how does the GKD group then approach innovation in, let's say, sustainable materials? And what challenges have you faced in developing these materials in your product lines? And maybe you have examples to share with the audience. Mm. That's a very good question. So basically, we are always open to new materials. So the world of materials is huge. Uh, so uh, we are networking with uh, many universities in the field of research. And um, so we always have an ear, let's say, to the ground when it comes to innovations. And last but not least, we are still bound by technical specifications. So that have to fulfill classic also requirements from customers, but also a technical part in the application. So, Things like uh, tensile strength, elast elasticity, temperature, resistance, so and so on and so forth. So, so various things. So you you are not we are very free to decide about uh, the, the material as such. And for example, when using a new wire trials, we start fairly conservatively. Uh, by first validating also laboratory tests, uh, followed by weaving trials in, in ref direction because this is the more flexible structure when it comes to the weaving procedure and later on with larger scale production. So we start, let's say, from the minimum, let's say, to the bigger ones, and then we see how it runs. And when it runs, then yes, um, new materials, new products are born. But um, yes, material, it's, uh, it's a very important starting point and also important to us. Perfect. Yeah, thanks for sharing. When we see that also in a larger picture, like the examples that you shared, how does the GKD group um, incorporate then corporate responsibility into its core strategy? Because we have started now with like recycling components, innovation, but how is the broader frame like for you in terms of maybe also um, collaborations? How does the external environment help you to shape your strategy? Yeah, so I think that's an interesting question because I think it's always healthy to know what your own strengths are and when it makes sense to get support from experts from the from outside. So the development of the GKD would not have been possible if we hadn't always had partners with whom we still work today also. So um, starting with mechanical engineering to um, create new machinery, um, product innovations with customers or also um, other so um, in context of our webinar today, for example, the so topics as sustainability are also, so we, we set up big projects. We are looking for people um, from outside who can help us to, um, to bring a big effort to that. So our goal here is create solutions. So be open-minded. We know enough about the challenges and the problems. Um, so for us, it's important to be proactive and then it helps a lot to have an expert on site that we get as fast as we can also to solutions uh, which are driving us. So um, when I, I look for a concrete some um, example to that. So um, the wire weaving industry is uh, in Germany, for example, but also in the European Union is very uh, relatively limited. So we are looking on the or the world perspective not, I think you all know that, but when we are talking about European Union and in that focus we are weaving for, it's limited. So we are involved into an association of the German wire weaving mills, for example, and we work together in working groups on topics um, to um, which are becoming for this as an industry standard. So being used successfully also across industry, so not only for weaving, but also for others. So we are looking also the whole, let's say supply chain and help also smaller companies, but um, people which are our partners also to grow with us. So myself, I'm chair of the sustainability working group um, in and this um, association um, of the German wire weaving mills. And together with my colleagues, we try to navigate, for example, through the jungle of software providers um, on product home footprint, on CSID challenges and other topics. So that we exchange our expertise and um, our knowledge also to to help each other to grow. And um, yeah, so I think it's um, it's a big part. I really love to do that, also to have exchange with others, other mindsets. And 
yeah. So it's only one of several examples I can give to you. Perfect. Maybe also um, adding on to that, um, I mean, you mentioned already like the industry, um, own industry associations that you're collaborating with. So maybe other companies that um, you would generally consider as competitors and you found a way of, of sharing knowledge uh, with them and drive the sustainability together. But I know that also other companies are working with, let's say, startups. I'm not expecting that you say any names, but just like, is that an, uh, an avenue you explore or how do you handle this uh, collaboration to get also the inspiration from outside regarding innovation? Yes, yeah, so um, when it comes to innovation, so um, I think we we have, like I said, we have a, a really an ear on, on the research platform. So um, at the moment, um, one of our focus is really to recycle, for example. So um, we are living in the Cologne area. So, and around us, we have several universities and startups also, which are extracting out of the university and research. And we try to figure out what is possible to recycle our material, especially the hybrid material when two uh, different materials are coming up. So to um, it's not easy to, to select them, to, um, uh, to come back to their own source. So uh, we are looking of possibilities which help and also with help with helps the startups to grow and us to, let's say, complete our cycle. Yeah, so let's say to have a round shape on that. So um, so I think this is one, yes, um, of of the startups I can um, I can talk about. Thanks so much. When it comes to, of course, um, driving sustainability forward, and I know you have been engaging also in the topic um, even before I was uh, with you and joining you on this pathway, but um, I know that a lot of companies also struggle, especially during their first years of familiarizing themselves with the topic. So what were for you also for GKD um, when you started right now the sustainability that you faced and maybe you can share some solutions to these challenges. So the challenges, yes. Um, yeah, so the challenges lie in data transparency, speed, for example, and certainly also in the individual motivation of, of each and every people which is a part of the team. So sustainability is not an issue for a single person, also not, so it's it's in my title, yes, of my function, but it's it's not, it cannot run with one single person or one department, yeah, so be honest. Sustainability is something that has to be integrated into the whole organization and everyone has to understand it's, you are the part of it, yeah. So make sure you understand that's the one, one topic. So you can always change what you can't do, but you can't change what you don't want to do. So communication, I think, is there the key. So to, to understand what, what is perhaps the concerns on the other side, yeah? Perhaps there are concerns uh, or you are scared about the, the dynamic of the regulation. Fully agree to that. But what can help is communication. So what is the problem? What is the concern to talk about and then to run for it into the future, but together, yeah? So it's not a one and only single spot. It's let's say it's a broad perspective. It's a broad uh, a topic and you, can, you only can do it in a team. Yeah, thanks for sharing this. And I know, of course, um, that you have um, different uh, locations also worldwide. Could you maybe also um, talk on this precisely because I know our audience is quite international and I know also some smaller and bigger uh, companies um, also signed up with, um, I assume very much so also international subsidiaries, international manufacturing entities. Um, yeah, how is your approach on roping them into the conversation and aligning them with the strategy um, and sustainability aspects? Yeah, good aspect. Um, so um, it's it's not easy to do because um, sometimes when you try to run for a topic or a project, especially with um, when you try to roll out internationally, you have to understand the local sites and the local needs. And um, it's especially with, with regard to sustainability, sometimes difficult to understand the local need when you never went to this country. 
for example. So I think it's absolutely a must when you talk about strategic big project, when you know the location on the other side, when you know the people on the other side, um, it's not the, let's say, the German way to do it uh, a lot. Yeah, it's not the bureaucratic, I have a checklist thing and you you push it over. So it's also to talk about. And uh, as I said, so one thing is also the culture aspect. This is something you have to put into consideration. We are nicely talking about European Union and we are all the same, but we have some slightly cultural aspects. And I think it's, it's also part of, of, of our DNA. And uh, when we come together in a cross-functional team, also globally, then um, it's important to understand each other and also on a cultural level. And so communication helps a lot to understand and also sometimes to step back a little bit and to give some other, let's say, this more the stage or the possibility to, to raise up the hands and um, to discuss things and to be open. So... I think this is something when I would ask uh, people from, from, from the global team, I think that they will fully agree. Um, communication is, is a lot what, what helps us. It's, um, yeah, and to struggle uh, throughout these uh, also local needs. Yeah, thanks for these insights. I think it's very um, important that uh, we acknowledge also that we're still very much diverse, although we talk about sustainability as a term, but if you ask like five people, then we have five different opinions and interpretations of it. Sure, sure. And I understand that. So mm -hmm. when I, from my personal view, I also have a different interpretation for some sustainability aspects than um, when I talk about it in my function within this organization, because also... The, the level of impact is difficult. When I take a decision in my function for, for a big project, it's a difficult uh, or it's a different level of, of decision also than I take only for myself, let's say, yeah. And um, so I think, yeah, it's, it's important to be open-minded and um, yeah, and um, to talk. Mm -hmm. Talking also about the different interpretations, um, just maybe a side question on that note. Okay. How were, um, how was the, let's say, shaping of the sustainability strategy and how did you integrate the viewpoints of others? Or where would you say, oh, we actually um, were very precise and not including maybe, let's say, the international locations too early in the process because we wanted to steer it maybe from the headquarters perspective. Can you maybe just summarize how you approach the building of the sustainability strategy? Um so we with this uh, initiative so the let's say to when we talk about our vision that we uh, with all the products we are producing we try to um, make the world uh, healthier cleaner and safer it's one part but to make the people understand what that means um, is a different and to set up the uh, C initiative helps a lot also to focus on certain things and to give it um, a more better platform when it comes to the international roll up i'm i would not say i would uh, decide for one only answer so from my point of view now i would say perhaps it was a little too early to um, push let's say also some international or some aspects too early to the international parties because um, it um, we did a lot to to qualify the people to make them understand to train the people and i think this is something which was underestimated um to say how many training sessions do you need to make them um also the people on each location the same level of my understanding mm -hmm. and um i think the learning curve is when you did it you know how to do it better yeah so mm -hmm. It's it's a continuous learning uh, learning curve, yeah. So you have to be 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 open for the change. Um, we try to plan a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, but we see, uh, or we saw also when I look back, that not everything um, was happened like we planned. So if you are, so this is one of my learning curves also. Also now is, if you are not one hundred percent, the only influencing factor. Yeah, so you have to be open for changes. And um, yeah, so I think 
it's not the one and only direction or the one and only plan for go for it. But um, yeah, yeah, we have to we we underestimated the training um, the training volume we need to get everyone on the same level. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about we stick to the lessons learned that you nicely already connected um, to, like how you wrote out the strategies. So what other lessons learned um, from the sustainability journey that uh, you already traveled um, do you think can be applied also to other businesses aiming for the same uh, journey path that you have been traveling so far? You mean in, in the terms of, um, of of trends or topics which are coming up? Um, no, I think more the, the lessons learned that, um, yeah, kind of the, the success stories, maybe mm -hmm. some failures you already mentioned, or maybe you would uh, next time um, push out certain mm -hmm. things a little bit later when you have more clear understanding in the headquarters, and maybe yeah. then look at the internationals. Are there other aspects where you would say, oh, I wish I would have known this a little bit earlier <laughs> in the process? Data transparency. So I get, can you give you one example? So um, in my German head, was it was easy to say, okay, I have an invoice where um, my energy emission information is written on. So I called the accounting um, department and asked for it. Um, so get the invoice and every information I had was done by a click. And um, I said, so this is a basic information. and when we talk about emissions, okay, that's an easy run for it. So we ask on a global level, and I was still in my head and um, with this German push the button thing. And um, the answer from all other locations took um, a few weeks and I was not aware. And this is also a challenge we are not facing in the beginning of each um, strategic project. It, it was for, for the local people, it was a challenge to get on the information. Mm -hmm. So um, I think sometimes in the beginning, and this is also one learning, it is not clear what options do we have on the local side. And it's not that the people are not motivated, not for sure not, they are very, very motivated, but it's not as easy to come to the information. Sometimes they are owned by government. So to, to get into touch into uh, energy contracting or um, pricings, or it's, it's made by government, yeah. So um, there is a variety of global um, governance things and also regulations and, um, I think one learning is uh, be open-minded, but also to not not think only with your own head and your experience. You, everyone has a filter, and my filter was, let's say, for example, it's an easy job to collect the information, and what I learned is it's not as easy as I thought uh, of. And I can give you hundreds of these examples. Um, and um, it's uh, when you stuck then into a frustration mode, um, you will never get out. So be open, be positive. It's a challenge, run for it. Yeah, thanks for this recommendation. I think that's something that I came across in all of the companies that I had the pleasure to meet so far on the sustainability journey. I think with all the transformation and change processes that we steer, regardless of its sustainability or any other um, thing that you want to change in the corporate or any other institutional context, it's always, you know, like a little bit of a honeymoon phase and then you are kind of frustrated and lost and uh, I don't know, feel like crying and uh, frustrated, anger, whatever. And then it comes in, in loops. Um, and so I think it's, it's the same with sustainability. Um, you will have some very nice moments, but also some moments where you're probably very, very frustrated. And I think um, it's a very good recommendation to also push through that and also think that it's um, yeah, part of the journey itself. Um, and yeah. And and I would say, especially with regard to sustainability, um, it's not a, it is a topic which was already important 20 years ago, for sure. But um, what at the moment is going on, especially with um, politics and regulations, it's very, very dynamic. So you have to uh, reset yourself also because when you always run for each impulse you get 
it's it's really a mess then you you have to focus and also sometimes come down so the regulation pops up um you have to have a look on it and then see the challenge and go i see i this sounds very easy and you can really um it's not as easy as i discussed this now with you it's now in the in the interview but um this is something I learned also from other projects and sustainability is a is a good example because it's dynamic. It's um, it's not stopping in the next uh, few years. So and um, yeah, so but you have to be open minded and go for it. Otherwise, you're stuck. And um, that's also not good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for these insights. And if um, yeah, we are concluding the interview now with the last question before I open up um, for questions from the floor. Um, if you would look into the future, like looking ahead, what kind of emerging trends in sustainability are you personally most excited about and how is maybe the GKD group already preparing to adopt these kind of trends? So I think... I would say you can roughly recognize three directions. Um, so <clears throat> the first is to ensure. So prevention through data analysis, for example, how, um, how can risk or the supply chain as such be recognized earlier to see trends? Um, so this is, I think, one of the parts. So self-sufficiency of production sites, which everything we have already throughout touched on previous questions. Then I see a second trend, uh, and namely that is the focus is it's more on people again, and that's a good thing. So we can talk about um, automation, digitalization, everything that has to, to do with it, but people equality, uh, right to training, and um, must be the concern of us all. So we are a family-owned business in the fourth generation. And I can say that I have been uh, with the same employer for the last 12 to 13 years. So, and this is because the appreciation of values at the GKD company is different to that uh, of others. So joint lunches, private sporting, uh, being friends with each other. Also, when we travel around the globe, so it's it's family owned, yeah. So we are sitting there together. So we have um, around the globe almost um, thousand people around, a little less. And so I I know mo most of the people, not everyone, but most also with the family background, yeah. To have in innovative formats, to come into exchange, older people with younger people, yeah. To have things like lunch and learn to learn from each other for example on special topics because people from the shop floor ask me so um, in your function it is named so um, things like processes so what does that mean when we talk about optimization or uh, I heard about a method can you so then we put up a lunch and learn and um, open this up as a big discussion so that everyone can can join and ask for so open feedback culture so everyone has an idea on something. So to be to be open and to discuss. So all this and much, much more is what, what makes people enjoy doing what they do. So like like I do. And the the third trend is certainly the circular economy. So innovative material, manufacturing process, recycling methods, renewable energies. Um, so everything that comes with it. So it's a the positive impact for GKD is to certainly that we have always open or we are always open to change and always have our ear to the ground with the customer and the research in, in institutes. And however, all of these topics are, let's say, united by the uh, highly dynamic regulatory uh, for, of environment. And uh, this is also the negative side. So. Uh, what are we doing here um, is, let's say, keeping our nerves. Yeah, um, We see some trends. Um, I think you have to stay focused. Um, circular topics are quite important for us because, as I said earlier, um, wasting material, it's cost intensive. Um, so we try to, to figure out how we can put more efficiency on ourselves. But um, also to have a look outside of our company is quite important. Um, and so um, I see these three trends, let's say, and directions which um, are getting uh, bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you so much, Rebecca, also for your time and your first insights. Um, I don't see any questions in the Q&A box, but um, you still have, um, of course, some minutes to um, share with us your questions, if you have any, for Rebecca. Um, and uh, of course, Rebecca, if you want, because I know you can probably also put it in the chat, uh, maybe your LinkedIn, uh, let's say, handle. So maybe people can then follow up with you if they have any individual questions that they are maybe too shy or too hesitant to post here. Maybe they can connect with you on LinkedIn more sure. on a private level and ask you some more questions then uh, as well. So uh, feel free to share your um, yeah, let's say contact details if you wish. Um, but yeah, we're waiting just a couple of more uh, minutes and mm -hmm. see if the questions are coming in. But maybe in the meantime, Rebecca, I can ask you more uh, like one um, question because it's also precisely about the CSRD, right? Um, <laughs> where we had the contact and what now the program is about um, that I did at, or I will do now in the coming months at IDC. Um, so what are maybe some, let's say, starting points, how you started into the process and how you build up all of this knowledge? What was maybe the, the first like baby steps you took into, into the process of getting to know and implementing the CSRD? Yeah, so I'm, I'm still um, in the position to feeling we are doing baby steps. Mm -hmm. So um, this is why I mentioned uh, speed also earlier in my one of my answers. So um I, I would say we start to uh come into touch with several wordings and to make also first um more um more transparent what does that mean when we talk about the csid so what are the requirements to understand what is the requirement exactly um to to see do we have something in place perhaps it's another wording or is it an interpretation and um, then to see, okay, what are, let's say, um, the bigger points and what, what are the quick wins? So we cannot run for, for that topic. And Marina, you know that uh, very, very well. When we try to figure out everything what is mentioned in the series ID uh, in one and only whole, that's, that's not the thing. So you have to, let's say, to divide every topic into slides and to see what options do we have. And quick wins helped out a lot um, to, to focus on others. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we did and which, what helps out us, for example, is that a, a main part of the requirements are based on energy and also environmental. And we as a company are already certified by ISO 14001 and 15001. And so we had already some of um, these technical experts or emission informations. And um, so this helps a lot also not to struggle by, by every topic. Um, then I think uh, one of the next baby steps was, and it is still the transparency about the information around the globe, because uh, as a holding, we are we need to have a um, report um, for all the location sites. And um, as I said earlier, it is difficult to get on the information. And it's not because of the people, it's because of the country, of um, the lack of information. And um, we collect a lot of information now and the situation we are facing at the moment is to, to focus, to analyze some of these aspects. And um, for me, the most important fact is to see how close we come to uh, take a decision for the 1.5 degrees Celsius. So um, this is something you know, I think, um, from the Paris Agreement, and um, this is one of the trigger points I see, and um, it helps out a lot um, to um, fulfill some question with the data information we have to have the emission balancing. And um, yeah, so when it comes to the CSID, I um, read a lot about the big ones. Uh, so I had a view, let's say, on those who had already the requirements. So we are small enough not to have the official requirements. Um, but um, you see, when you have a look on it, they all look shiny. They really all look shiny. But um, you have to see all the small letters uh, in the annex 
or um, underneath and to see that it's not primary daters, they are secondary daters. Um, they are also um, um, put money on that to a lot to, to make them look more shiny. And for us as a company, it's um, important to be honest. Yeah, so I discuss really nicely with a lot of customers when they have question about CSID, why you do not have this. And then I try to make uh, them understand um, what is the challenge we are facing. So, and I can, I, I can show the progress, I can show what we have, but it would be not honest to put a, to put a sign, a number on it, and um, it's not the reality. And so to be honest, I think it's also something I miss. It's some of the CSRD reports I saw. I would not say it's for everyone, but um, I expected to see more, uh, more realistic things. Um, but um, yeah, the reality is different. Yeah. Thanks, Rebecca. Also for your encouraging words in, in some regards, right? So what kind of trigger points we have to come up with the reporting not to provide something like nice and shiny marketing brochures but to really use it to drive innovation to make us more competitive to really make us more resilient also towards the future um, provide you know more comprehensive values also for the employees that are working with us and i think that is for me at least also and i know for you um, as well um, one of the cornerstones of uh, of sustainability and also actually the the benefit behind sustainability reporting. I mean, we we joke internally between the two of us, of course, always that we say, oh, the report is just like kind of a trash document, so you just put it in the bin and that's it, you know. So it's just a byproduct that we yes have to do because of the reporting regulation. But um, the pathway to get to this the report is the essential way that transforms the company. So it's actually not about the report, but about everything that happens on this way to the reporting. And that is why the reporting itself for me is not so exciting. Yes, we have to do it for compliance reasons, but then it's a good tool, let's say, to go this pathway to um, initiate this transformation. So thanks for that, Rebecca. We have uh, a comment, not a question, but I want to nevertheless read it out to you, uh, Rebecca, um, by uh, Leo. So um, he is saying that uh, thanks to you and of course to me, so thanks Leo, uh, for the um, inspiring talk. And now it's easier um, for me when I heard about Rebecca's point of view and her challenges in the company. Um, ESG, sustainability is the universe of different areas, topics and activities. And it's too much to be handled by one department or sustainability department, a standalone or a few people only. So thanks for removing the frustration, at least for today. <laughs> yeah, so you can you can easily find really nice also discussion from the big players over the world. So and um, you can see YouTube videos and and interviews, and it's easy to say. When you have more than millions you can spend on, you have a team uh, with regards to sustainability, which uh, is, uh, let's say, made out of 30 people or something. Yeah, so it's easy to do. Yeah, and then to put a, a video on it, a shiny marketing video, and to say, hey, we are green and we are nice, we are efficient. And so um, I think let's be realistic. Yes, it's the case for those who are the big ones, and um, but uh, look perhaps also between the lines and ask the right questions at the end. Um, I push um, myself also a lot, and I learned every 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 day, um, and it is a challenge. So you have to take it. And yes, for sure, I also stuck sometimes. I'm still in a frustration circle, and then you come out of it, but. You cannot run for this big topic, um, let's say also as a one-man show, as small small entities or um, medium-sized companies also. You have a small team sometimes um, which can push um, um, those topics and um, focus, focus on your strength, yeah? And going forward step by step. So when you have a plan, you have a plan, yeah? Otherwise you have to spend millions and millions um, to get it into one. I think important is that we go for it. Yeah. So not say uh, I have not the money, I will not do it. And so I step back, that's not the case. So, but take, take your time to focus, but go for it. 
Yeah. So I think this is one of the of the aspects I see, and it's nice to see the big ones. And uh, I would like to say I I not look uh, to to those videos also. Sometimes I'm I'm laughing a lot because yes, it's it's not reality for for myself. Yeah. But to see what they are doing also, and um, also to 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 get some some innovative ideas, or also to go to, let's say some some interviews or fairs or expect uh, also take the chance to talk to them, and you would say it's also everything is made out of water. I would say, yeah. So um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Rebecca, if you don't mind, I will share also your contact details for people sure. who have um, questions. So just mm -hmm. the, the LinkedIn, and then you can reach out to Rebecca. You can also get my contact, uh, LinkedIn contact, of course. And I would also, while I'm re-showing the slides um, again, post you the link of the program that we are actually talking about right now. So I will just re-share the slides um, for the last remaining minutes and tell you a little bit about um, how that was driving me to come up um, with this like course design. And again, it's uh, happening for the first time at IDC. So we are also very much looking forward how this new format will be, uh, um, let's say, taken up by, by companies, how they like it. And so um, as a lecturer and also researcher, as a consultant, I'm very, very open to suggestions. And um, I would really like to have like forward thinking companies um, that are joining this uh, course together with me to also see how, how this can really help the company. So that is my core inspiration, why I also wanted to be a consultant, to really um, support, um, to offer maybe the knowledge that is not yet there, but um, to also make myself not needed as quickly as possible, right? So to, to support and to give you the initial knowledge and then take myself back so you can walk the steps alone. And um, yeah, I shared the link already, but let me also reshare the slides quickly with you so that you can see that also um, a little bit better. Now, um, this is precisely now the course that we are uh, talking about. So this is um, pretty much the uh, sustainability programs that we offer at IDC. So we have now, um, yeah, our effort is to, to ramp it up a little bit. Um, so meaning um, I'm the person responsible for uh, sustainability together with a couple of other colleagues. And so um, the course uh, sustainability from standards to action is precisely the course um, that is taking you through some of the experience that, that Rebecca has mentioned. So it was conceptualized for companies who are having struggles to implement the CSRD, so the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive as an EU regulation. At the same time, I think it would also be appropriate for companies who want to take it to the next level. Yes, we want to focus on the CSRD, but at the same time, I think it's a transformation or sustainability transformation pathway. So if you're kind of stuck you still actually don't need to report according to the CSRD, but you want to drive it a step further, then I think nevertheless, this course is for you. If you say, oh, I'm actually pretty early, we don't have really a sustainability strategy yet. Um, I'm not so familiar with sustainability as a topic as of yet, but we really want to get started. You might want to start with the um, smaller scale program. So our two day seminar, uh, which is called Sustainability Strategy Methods and Tools for its Implementation, where we just provide you with, let's say, a starter of um, sustainability ideas, uh, maybe talking about what cornerstones and composition aspect a sustainability strategy should or could have. And if you are more advanced and you say, oh, I'm actually in the field of sustainability for a couple of years, we are also pretty advanced. We have the first activities, maybe you have a team already, and you need to report or want to take it to a more measurable level than um, this more broader format sustainability from standards to action is for you. Now, the question is of course, what is it about then precisely? So I will focus more on this like broader program because it's new and it will start um, also very soon. So again, the goal was to equip participants with a comprehensive knowledge and tools to navigate the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive and also related EU regulations. What do we mean by that? Um, through the conversations with Rebecca in the company, but also other players, we have realized that even though the European Supply Chain Act has been reduced in the complexity, 
there is a lot of intertwinement between CSRD, EU taxonomy, um, and other regulations like the EU Supply Chain Act or the CSDD, as it's called in the abbreviation. And so the supply chain topics, nevertheless, are somehow interrelated with the CSRD as well. So we need to take into account different types of regulatory frameworks to really provide you with a solid background so that um, your setup is state of the art. And that is why we say, OK, yes, CSRD is more pressing because it's in force right now. Um, for the CSDD, it takes a little bit longer, maybe still, but at the same time, there's a lot of intertwinement with supply chain aspects, because if you don't under understand your supply chains, you are limited in the impact that you will have with your sustainability actions. Now, what is the program about and what are the components? So we have conceptualized the program in a way that we have three on-site and three online modules. So I think it's uh, fair to say that's the first course of this kind at IDC that is happening for a longer period of time, this breaks in between. Um, and that is like a whole course in itself. So we have an on-site module that is starting in May. We have an on-site module in June and in October. And in between, we have an online get together um, also in June after the first um, module that is taking place on site in July, also um, an online one and in September. So we always proceed in a way that we have an on site module where we have two days together to spend on a topic. Then we have a debriefing or let's say a break of usually three to four weeks. Then we get together online for half a day to discuss the questions and what has happened in, let's say, in the meantime, so to say, after you got the first knowledge input on the site. And that is the iterative fashion, how we designed the course, because um, talking to Rebecca, working with other companies, we have seen that it takes time to digest all of this knowledge and to push the process forward in the company. What I have seen as a lecturer and also attending seminars myself, it's sometimes very nice to have this input and then you're back to reality, so to speak. And then nothing happens, sometimes, not always, but sometimes it is the case. And with this course, we hope, we hope at least to uh, avoid this so that we can send you home with, let's say, some homework, let you come back, talk about the challenges, we discuss a couple of more questions, you get the second input, you come back with more questions, so that we really have a longer period of six months to spend together and really work on the implementation. So I don't want it to be just a knowledge a seminar and webinars. I want you to really take this forward and implement this in practice. So we have designed it particularly for this reason to be a face-to-face -face and also um, online learning experience. We have a practical assignment, so it will be very, very hands-on. Um, yes, of course, we have to start with a little bit of theory, but that will be rather very, very brief. And then we go into, um, let's say, templates, toolkits, examples on how you can do, for example, materiality assessment. How can we do a stakeholder survey? What are the different steps? And then we have um, feedback sessions and also in between, um, I would make sure to rope in experts uh, such as Rebecca, um, who can really share their experience on how they did it, what were the issues, um, what were maybe success factors. And again, the topics will be um, yeah, on, let's say, um, something such as sustainable leadership and strategy development, strategy development in a way that we say, okay, you have a foundation already. What are the building blocks now that you want to rope in? Will that be, for example, um, something like a circular economy and you need to implant it into your strategy? So these are all the outcomes of the materiality matrix. And that is the, let's say, the input in the first course. How um, can we make your business model that you already have and turn it into a sustainable business model. We will go into tools such as uh, Sustainable Business Model Canvas um, and also others to really get you up to speed from a strategy perspective and provide you with the background um, in May. In June, for the on-site session, we will go into the measurements that I provide you a very, very, let's say, um, condensed overview of what are the different components of the CSRD. So ecology, social factors, governance factors. So for ecology, we have, for example, climate um, aspects. We have pollution. We have water topics. We have circular economy. We have biodiversity. 
for the social aspects, we have the own workers, we have the value chain workers, we have the consumers and we have um, the affected communities. And for governance, we have the business conduct. So this is the comprehensive setup of the CSRD, nevertheless, also very much representative of what, let's say, the um, sustainability building blocks are about anyways, so regardless of the CSRD. And these will be aspects, um, including also later on in the third um, uh, component, on-site component, the corporate communication, maybe some um, activism steps from your corporate perspective, um, and then also, of course, the reporting of how this can be done. Yeah, as I said, I'm looking very much forward um, to driving this um, together with you. And again, um, the program faculty, I will do it together with a colleague of mine, with Lisa. She's also a practitioner herself. Um, both um, uh, of us have an academic, but also a practitioner background. She's a very, very strong as, uh, expert in sustainable supply chains. And we are very, very much looking forward uh, to doing this together with you. Here's the contact details also from our program managers and uh, who are the uh, kind supporting forces behind all of the courses that we conceptualize. And yeah, with this, I would like to thank you so much for tuning in, listening in. And of course, thanks uh, a million to Rebecca who dedicated the time and shared yeah, behind the scenes insights on how the, let's say, sustainability <laughs> was for her. And I think it's still a journey that we are also both still um, like mid in, in the middle of this transformation journey. So I think in the seminar, I can also um, have Rebecca coming in from time to time that she can share updates on how it's going and if she's sure. on the moon phase or the frustration <sighs> phase at the moment. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks to everyone in the audience. And I hope uh, to see some of you soon then in May when we start with a new program. So thanks to everyone and bye-bye.